Typhoon Haiyan has claimed its second Australian victim, an 87-year-old woman who'd been living in Tecloven. Another Australian has been airlifted out of the disaster zone, injured but lucky to have survived. Amid desperate evacuees at the airport, Aussie Les Thomas is just happy to be alive on his 68th birthday. Absolute miracle. Absolute miracle. I, I, I wouldn't recommend it. I, I don't think I'll be doing it again. <laughs> the Vietnam War veteran has lived here just five weeks with his wife, Sonata. They fled their blue home when the typhoon ripped the roof off and they clung to a cyclone wire fence with raging water all around them for four hours. The road was like a river of wood and, and rubbish and going at such a speed you couldn't believe it. He suffered severe cuts and bruises. I had so many injuries, I'm covered, look I mean they're all healed. I'm just covered, my back, my arms, my both legs. As the storm subsided he returned to his devastated home. More heartbreak. Looters had already hit my place, they took all my shoes, they took all my shirts bar three and left me with one pair of shorts. I'm happy, I'm alive. Les and Zanada were evacuated by the US Air Force and will return home to Melbourne. Help from above for those who can't leave. These aid workers were swamped as they landed. Pure desperation on the people's faces. There's another drop to make. Crew members fearful of being mobbed again just throw supplies to the ground. Philippines government officials say 3,600 people died in this disaster. Yesterday, UN officials said it was 4,400. Really, when so many areas still look like this, it's all rough guesswork. And the Australian mobile hospital here has treated its first patients. Henry was injured climbing a coconut tree to escape the storm surge. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for helping the Filipino people. And Nick McCallum joins us now from Tacloban. Nick, it's now been a week since the storm hit, but the relief effort is still frustratingly slow. Yes, Mark, painfully slow. In fact, not just for the victims, but also for the aid work workers. At the airport, we were approached by a number of American Air Force officials. They complained that commercial jetliners were getting landing preferences ahead of their aid flights, which bring in food, other aid, and take out people who've lost absolutely everything. Now, the Americans would not appear on camera, but they say this policy is creating enormous delays. They're furious, and they want people to know, Mark. Yes, yeah, so they should be. Nick, thank you.